My name is Melissa Martz, and I am running for US Congress in what is now District 21. Uh, I'm an attorney, I'm a mother, I'm a homeschooling mother, um, and I am a patriot and a constitutionalist. Um, tell me, just first of all, what is what motivated you to run for Congress in the first place? Uh, well, there are really two things that motivated me. Uh, the first was the the awakening personally of the tyranny that we are under from our local and our federal government when those uh, mandates, those unconstitutional mandates started coming down from Palm Beach County. We had an unconstitutional mask mandate um, that came down. I started attending meet meetings, speaking out. I sued Palm Beach County against that unconstitutional mask mandate. And I foolishly thought because I I booked con law in law school, which means I got the highest grade in, in con law too. Um, I thought, oh, this should be easy. It's black and white. This is clearly unconstitutional. Uh, but that was the beginning of my education and how kind of deep seated the, the corruption and the tyranny that we have is in every facet of government. And that is what ultimately led me to run. But um, beyond that, it really is being a mother and understanding that this is about preserving and restoring our republic for the future generations. I believe we're on the precipice of losing um, everything that's written here in our constitution if we don't stand up in this time. So that is why I decided to put my hat in the ring and give the people another option in constitutional representation. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your campaign sign that is quite eye grabbing, if you will. Uh, you have a child in, and I'm assuming is your child in the back, in the backpack? And it's actually um, a baby doll, so it's not a real. Oh, it's child. a baby doll. It's a baby yeah. doll. Okay, it's a baby doll and um, an assault rifle. Why did you chose that type of, I guess, presentation uh, for your? Well, let me be sure. Well, so let's just clarify a few things. So it's actually not an assault rifle. So um, the that term assault rifle is actually a misnomer. It's a created created terminology. What I'm holding is an AR-15. Um, and the AR stands for Armalite, which is the name of the company that created the gun in the 50s. It's a semi-automatic uh, weapon, which is functions the same as a regular handgun. Um, an M16, which is actually a weapon of war, um, it is not semi-automatic. So uh, to be clear, it is an AR-15 that I'm holding in the photo. And to answer your question, um, why the ad? Uh, uh, well, there, there are several reasons, but two of the reasons that I decided to run in this district, specifically in what was 18, it's now called 21, was to unseat the, the congressman there um, who is is basically what the term that people use often, um, he is a rhino. So he's come hard after our Second Amendment right. He wrote um, an opinion piece in the New York Times stating that no one should own an AR-15. He would support a ban of an AR-15 at the federal level. This is patently a violation of his constitutional oath. Um, so for those of us that are paying attention, for my um, Venezuelan Americans that, that are paying attention, they, they've seen this happen in their country. They escaped um, a communist country to come to America. They will all tell you, and not, not only countries like Venezuela, but countries like Germany um, and many other countries, in fact, that have had their firearms taken away from them. And that was the beginning of the end of their freedoms. That's why it's you know number two in our constitution Constitution is to protect our right to be able to form militia and overthrow our government if they become rogue and tyrannical. So th that's why the firearm, um, why the baby in the photo. So another reason I chose, one of the main reasons I chose to run in this district is that um, the congressman has been really weak on border control, um, has been weak on what's happened. There's sex trafficking of our children that's happening at the border. This is what I was advocating against. Sorry, it's thundering by me. Um, this is what I was advocating against um, before I was ever involved in any kind of politics or advocacy for our constitutional rights as an attorney. So um, he's been weak on the border, but more than that, he's got publicly documented public comments about having sex with children. And at this point, I think that the people that are in office need to be held to a high standard. That's a deal breaker for me. When I found out that the congressman there was talking, joking about having sex um, with children overseas, um, that's a deal breaker for me. And protecting our children is, is paramount for me. And that's what I intend to do. Whether I get in or not, I will be outing those that uh, promote pedophilia and I will be protecting the children at all costs. Um, and so obviously your that ad is going it's it's a hot button ad. You know, it's gonna trigger a lot of people in different types of emotions. 
Um, for the people who are victims of mass shootings, uh, like the parents and families, when they see that, you know, their vantage point is going to be different from where you're coming from, looking at looking at it from the surface, what what would you say to those families and individuals who may have that type of opinion when they, you know, first glance at the, at your ad? Well, I would say it's an, an unfair assumption that they would all disagree um, with protecting the Second Amendment. And Marjorie Taylor Greene herself uh, was involved as, as a teenager in a school shooting, and she agrees uh, with the sign that we should have people armed um, so that we can protect against school shootings. So right now we have uh, laws that make schools gun free zones and it's not actually helping um, those victims and those parents. And I also want to say that, um, yes, it is it is thought provoking and i'm happy to be uh provoking that conversation because we need to have it in fact it's the bigger conversation that we need to have it's the school shootings and my poster is not actually about school shootings it's about protecting our second amendment right but you're right it it has been our second amendment right has been hijacked to be about school shootings and, and your everyday uh, mugging or preventing against rape that's actually not what our second amendment um, is about and when you look at the school shootings and and gun crime in general we have a problem and the problem we have is not with our firearms or our second amendment it is a mental health issue so the rough stats are for every 10 gun deaths six of them are suicides of the remaining remaining four the majority of that four are black on black crime we have a stat of 70 women a day in the u.s are, are assaulted with a firearm by their intimate partner. That's a domestic violence issue. So this is a conversation that needs to be had, but we need to broaden the conversation. Instead, I believe this issue is being highly politicized um, with an intent to take away our firearms so that if we need to overthrow our, our government and have our second revolutionary war, we are unarmed like the majority of other countries. If people don't like their second amendment right, there are two ways out we can reform our constitution or we can move to one of the many other countries where you are not allowed to own a firearm let alone an ar-15 um so you know to to those people that feel differently i would i would say that but i would encourage the dialogue to be had about mental health very important and then the other thing i want to say about this jarring image i actually lived that image um when i was a single mother i had a home invasion a man was beating down my door i held my my 10 month old baby on my hip and held my firearm pointed at the door until the police came so um, again this is not actually what our second amendment is for but that is not just an image i threw threw up there just for the sake of throwing it up there i mean what i say when i stand for children and protecting our children and protecting our second amendment right um, and i have had to pull my firearm to protect my own child um, in your website, it says, uh, we hope this line will cause people to vet all the candidates for this district. Yes. Elaborate a little bit more on that for me. Yeah, so the verbiage on the sign says, um, to protect our Second Amendment right and our children from Brian, who is the incumbent. So that is the congressman that is actively seeking to uh, support a ban on AR-15s, who is coming after your Second Amendment right. And he is also, um, you know, Thinks it's thinks it's completely appropriate to make jokes about having sex with our children and to support laws that promote open borders and and the promotion of child trafficking at the border. So um, I hope that this will be thought provoking. So people will go and do their own fact checking. They won't just take my word for it on a sign, but they will check uh, voting history. They will look at who's donating or whose campaign. Um, we have been fed a narrative one side we are told who to vote for big money and politics they pick our representatives as it now stands so a lot of times these congress people we think they're so great because they're flashed up on you know cnn or fox news and they tell a good story but that's just one side that we're shown and we need to scratch the surface to see how are they really representing us i'm a grassroots candidate i'm not taking big money pack money dark money what you see is what you get um, i have no other reason to run than to protect and preserve and really restore our republic I mean, it's kind of interesting because he as well is a Republican who has the the endorsement of former President Donald Trump. Uh, very, you know, popular within that particular voting group, voting blog. Um, do you feel like it's an uphill battle for you? Um, 
I don't. <laughs> I, I That's just not the perspective I have, or I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I wouldn't have gotten, like I mentioned, I was a single mother. I worked two jobs, put, put myself through law school. Um, the, I don't have a defeatist attitude, so it's that's not something I would allow into my purview. But what, what I will say is um, we are on the verge of losing our country and we are in for the fight of our lives. So from that perspective, yes, it, it is a battle. Um, and it's one that I'm willing to fight and it's one that I'm willing to, to lose my life for. Um, and those are the kind of people that we need serving us, those that are willing to keep their oath to the constitution and to defend it uh, with their lives. So, yes. Okay, um, sorry. It's like I'm in the car and it's raining. <laughs> That's okay. It's happening here too. <laughs> the storm is upon us. The storm is upon us, right? Um, okay. Uh, you mentioned Venezuela, and uh, the people fear that you know our country is going to go that way. Do you feel like is is there? Because I feel like there is a strong Republican voice that would like not let that happen in this country. Do you do you disagree? Do you feel like? Some are, I don't know, I just feel like, we, you know, we, we do have a Congress and I don't know if, you know, both political parties will allow something like that to happen in this country. Well, um, my in my humble opinion and my humble experience, the monster is on both sides of the aisle. So we don't have free and fair election on Republican or Democrat side. The monster is on both sides of the aisle. They have been working in the majority together behind the scenes. There's an illusion that there is somehow a party line here. Um, so, you know, could this happen in our country? I, I believe it could happen so much. That's why I have uh, decided to run for Congress. <laughs> you know, it's not something, it wasn't a dream of mine. I don't want to be a career politician. I will turn myself out if I get in, um, if I haven't been able to implement term limits limits at the congressional level. Um, so, you know, can it happen in our country? I People reach out to me all the time, uh, specifically from Venezuela. We have a, a, a good population here in South Florida, very, very concerned. You know, it was brought to my attention actually over the weekend that there are no zoos in Venezuela or there are little zoos in Venezuela because the people had to eat their animals because they, they were once one of the wealthiest nations. And they were chipped away at and one of those chipping aways was the removal of the ability to bear arms so i mean we have to pay attention is this is not a republican democratic issue this is you know do we really believe in our constitution do we believe that we have a creator that gave us these inalienable rights and are we living willing to sacrifice for the freedom that we deserve that comes from god and not from our government so that's and the people that resonate with our founding fathers and what they wrote in our founding documents, I believe that's what's going to make sure that we do not succumb to the tyranny. Um, but you know, the, the time the time is now. So I've put my hat in the ring. I have I have my ad up. It's really clear where I stand. And I, you know, people, if our republic really works, you know, and barring any any allegations of election fraud, um, you know, it's up to the people at this point who they want to represent them. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, yes, I always like to remind people to not give up because this has been an arduous two years and there are a lot of reasons that we could give ourselves to give up. I want to remind people that this war, it's not just a physical war, it is really a psychological war. So if we feel defeated when we wake up in the morning because it's insurmountable, we've already lost. Um, so I just want to encourage people to get up every day. I'm giving up. Um, there are a lot of patriots out there and people that get understand our God-given liberties and how they deserve to be protected. So I just want to encourage people to not give up, um, that you're not alone, and that the victory is already ours.